Hey guys, so I wasn't planning on this video. I actually got a few story crafters planned that I'm going to start working on, but I saw this article that I wanted to share my thoughts on real quick. So I was going about my normal day, which was eating Lucky Charms and orange juice. And what it was is I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw this article that said, heartbroken Matthew Mercer replies to frustrated DM. And I'll actually read the article, but in summary, there's something apparently going on now called the Matthew Mercer effect. And I know there's been some people I've seen online that have problems with Matthew Mercer, and I kind of get it and kind of don't, but I wanted to get my thoughts on it because whether some people like it or not, I believe Matthew Mercer's like the face of the D&D community now because just how big Critical Role is and how a lot of people got their even interest in D&D was from Matthew Mercer. While like some people might have heard it from like source of media like Stranger Things or Big Bang Theory, we never really got a full in-depth look at it until we saw someone like Matthew Mercer and Critical Role, which is this big source that you can really see how it goes. And I wanted to really go into that because I know a lot of first-time players that follow this channel and also I feel like I, I feel like some of this should be said. And to start off, I want to clarify my thoughts on the whole thing. I love Matthew Mercer. I really do. Like, as far as voice actors go, my favorite, if I had a top three, it'd be like Phil Lamar, Matthew Mercer, and Vic Magnana. Those are top three. I love Matthew's roles. Like, he, uh, some of my favorite characters he plays, like Trafalgar Law, Kanji Tatsumi, and the Black Power Salesman. And what I wanted to go over is... Starting off, I really started with Critical Role as well. Like, I feel like it's what really got my idea in it and idea of what it really was. Because there's an old quote that was said on the Please Stop Talking podcast. I feel like it really summarizes it where how a true D&D player starts is they know nobody who plays, but they have the books and they read them over and over and over again until one day they either talk their friends into playing or they find a group that can. And that was me, really, because... Me and friend tried to start a game, it fell through, but I still owned a 3.5 book, so I read the living crap out of them, and eventually I got to college, and I started playing there with two groups, and three actually, and all of them fell apart pretty bad, and I didn't really enjoy my experience in them, and like, it kind of got me out of idea what D&D was, but it wasn't handled that well, and... What it really taught me was when I found out about Critical Role and I watched it and absolutely fell in love with D&D was there's different styles of it and that's what I feel like this uh, guy is really having a problem with who made the Reddit post originally. So what it was was this Reddit post said, I'm running a campaign with a lot of first timers and I'm dealing um, with a lot of first timer problems. Um, air quotes, the one who ne uh, never speaks up, the one who needs to be railroaded, and a neutral good player playing a chaotic neutral, and a chaotic neutral uh, character being played chaotic evil. What you have a new situation I'm dealing with, a third of the group first got interested in D&D because of Critical Role. I like Matt Mercer as much as the next guy, but these guys watched like 30 plus hours of the show before they even picked up a D20. Dwarf thinks all dwarfs have Irish accents, the Dragonborn sounds exactly like the one from the show, which is fine, until they meet the NPCs that are played differently from how it's done in the show. I've been approached by half of the group and asked how I plan to handle resurrection when I told them I decided when we get there. They, uh, they told me how Matt does it. Our WhatsApp is filled with Geek and Sundry videos and how to play RPGs uh, better. There's nothing wrong with um, how they do it on the show, but I'm not Matt Mercer and they're not Vox Machina. At some point, the unrealistic expectations are going to clash with reality. So how do you guys deal with players who've had DMs they swear by? TLDR, Critical Role has become the prototype for how my players think D&D works. How do I push to, um, my own way of doing things without letting them down? And I feel like it really is the simplest fact of just tell them, hey, not everyone plays the same. Because a Critical Role is just a story and that's what D, D is it's a storytelling aspect and i know some people focus on one aspect or another but 
Christopher Perkins himself said that where it's not just a combat, there's a story to it as well. And not exact quote, but you know. So every writer is going to have their different ways of telling a story. Like you wouldn't put George R. R. Martin and J.K. Rowling right next to each other and expect the exact same storytelling method from them. So that's really what you got to look at is everyone's going to have their own method of doing it. I've been in campaigns where it's more combat heavy. I've been that are more story heavy and that's just how it is. And I'll openly admit I'm more of a storyteller. I'm getting better at combat, but I've never been the best at it. So yeah, that's something um, you got to look at. So, and the, what made this really big was Matt Mercer himself actually responded to it. And it kind of made me sad when, I saw this and seeing stuff like this kind of breaks my heart regardless the fact of the matter is our style of play is just mm, um, different that um, that is just that our style of play every table is different and should be if they want to copy what we do um, that's not very creative or what makes the game magic at the table I do believe that it's important for any gaming group to discuss expectations early into a campaign so everyone can get um, on the same page and avoid uh, dissonance. However, it's everyone's responsibility at the table to provide and add to the experience um, for everyone to enjoy themselves and a story, not just a DM. I saw some comments below mentioned, do you want a particular style of game? Um, that level of uh, commitment rests on your shoulders. Um, Consolidation, your style, uh, and wishes. Um, I may said wrong with those of other players in DM. As, and somewhere in that unique mix that you will find on your table, special style storytelling. Need also I remind uh, your players that we are at a table professional actors, and I've been DMing for well over twenty years. We have spent our lives training in particular skills that allow us to get immersed in the characters as we enjoy doing. Anyone can jump in as deeply should they wish to, but expecting that immediate level of comfort and interest is unfair and absurd. Do you want a deep, convoluted, emotional journey like Scanlan? They better be able to bring it like Sam did. No? Then sit down and just have fun finding your own path. Which is true. Plus, our style is for everyone. Hell, Scanlan, and um, just get um, hell. Just scan the comments, not Scanlan, below, and see how many folks don't like us. <laughs> I played with many different players, ran games, and many different styles of folks. As I could tell you, there's so much fun and variety to how a tabletop RPG can be played. But there's limiting. They're limiting their chances to enjoy it by uh, trying to be just like us. Anyways, I say it with the best course. Um, I say the best course is to have a very frank conversation with them about these things. Clearly, say that your game will feel like your game, meaning that you and the players together. And it's their responsibility to bring to the table what um, facet they want to see in it. Show them this message if it helps. In fact, show uh, show them this message. Guys, relax. Your DM is kicking ass and is um, doing this for your enjoyment and journey. Appreciate that. Listen, build with them, and make something unique. Abandon expectations and just have fun together as friends. Anyway, so sorry. Things like th um, this are never my intent. It's a weird, wild west these days. You're um, going to be great, friend, uh, heart. And I feel like Matt said it really well. And yeah, there's not really a lot to add to it. Matt just did a good job with that reply. And a lot of the articles I've seen have actually left out. The guy responded to Matt's comment and saying, wow, thanks for the reply. I do appreciate what you do. In fact, Critical Role is the reason a couple of the people from my group got into the game in the first place. I'm very happy to have this response. They haven't, um, they haven't actually gotten upset or anything, but when you're dealing with a, pre um, a precedent who has 20 years of experience, it's nice to get affirmation from the man himself. And understand that. So that's something I wanted to address as well. You shouldn't hold your DM to that expectation. And I've been guilty of holding myself to that expectation while I won't say, I feel like Matt put it best when he said, don't copy what someone does. And I believe uh, you should like see how a lot of people do it and get your ideas from it. And maybe like think, oh, he did this well. Maybe I should try applying this. 
And I feel like that's a good method. And I feel like uh, watching Matt, I've learned how to DM more properly. And I thank him for that because his DM tips were really helpful. And so is actually seeing how the game works. But I've accepted that and I had some high expectations when I'd have some players trouble talking or trouble at really getting into the moment. And I had to take a step back and realize this isn't a role. These guys aren't professional actors. They're just a bunch of people having fun. And that's what I feel like is most important, to have fun. And I never got like the whole hate on Critical Role. And I think it's just the idea that a lot of people don't like it to be popular or like a series when it gets popular. Like, I remember that was even a joke about Goblin Slayer when Goblin Slayer became like the top anime of last year in some list. Some people were just like, wait, we did Normies now? What happened? And some people were kind of backing out because of it. And that's... That's a shame to me that anyone would ever back out of something just because it's popular. I mean, I get the idea that it's nice to have an own niche thing that only you really like, but at the same time, if you like something, shouldn't you want other people to enjoy it as well? And that's how I feel about D&D, because I like the fact that sometimes I have trouble finding people that, um, I mean, have trouble, like, telling people no, because there's so many people that want to try it now. And... I feel bad because of that, but I try and push them to other groups and push other people to DM, and I've actually helped another group start because of that, and that's so cool to me. And Matt helped create this, and we would never would have got this if it wasn't for that. So when you think of hating something just because it's popular, I want you to ask yourselves, would you rather be like, if you're like in my situation when you were younger, you had no one to play with, and all you could do is just read and imagine what would it be like if you got to play? Or would you like the overabundance of people to play it? Just some people don't know it that well. But if that's the case, help them learn. And some people may not be willing to learn that well. And some people may want to do it exactly like Vox um, Machina. And, well, yeah, they should find a group where they could play like that and just play in uh, Matt Mercer's campaign guide to Taldore. And that's how they do it. But so that's what I really want to say on all that is... Because I imagine there's probably some people that came into a game expecting Critical Role and realized it wasn't. And that's okay. Like, everyone has their own style. So don't be mad at the DM or the players for it. Just accept everyone has their own play style and have fun with it. And if you see a problem with it, you should probably encourage them, hey, maybe you should try this. But just don't, like, try and bring them down because they're something you expect them to be. Like, don't pour, uh, force your expectations onto someone. Just let everyone have fun in their own way. And it's all right if this was a little more serious than most videos. I just, I wanted to address this because I actually looked at some of the comments and I actually found this in a Facebook group and there was a weird amount of people hating on Crick Roll and I don't get it. Like one comment I saw a lot was, I don't want to see attractive people rolling dice and that's it. Somehow that took away from their playing. I don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, I saw comments like that and stuff saying that it wasn't that good anyways. And people glad Matt was heartbroken. And it's just baffling to me that someone who does so much for this community could not be met with so much hate. And I mean, I guess that's what happens when you become the face of it. You get like the good and the bad. And... I hate that for Matt, and I appreciate everything he does for it because he's done a lot for me in my life since he's really helped me get into it, and I feel like I've grown as a DM because of him, and I don't like to think of myself as someone trying to replicate him. I just want to take what he taught me and um, go forward, and I mean, and that's how I feel about one person who I'm trying to teach how to be a DM. I want them to be even better than me one day, and... When I see other people that I've, I've played with before who go on to DM, that's amazing to me. I'm happy for them. And I just hope y'all have some similar feelings. Rant over, guys. I love you guys. And I love Critical Role, and I think it's a good thing. And I hope you agree with me on this. And if not, just I hope you acknowledge people will have fun in their own way. And... Art's a subjective thing, so I get why some people may not like Trick Roll's storytelling style, but what may like how another player does it, and that's just how people prefer stories. Like, 
And that's what's good about this D&D is there's no set story that we have to follow. We can make our own. So just let everyone have fun, guys. I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.